welcome you to Syracuse, New York, inside the JMA Wireless Dome for the 2023 Orange and Blue Syracuse Spring Game. A great look at how the Orange is shaping up the offseason well underway and what to watch out for this fall. Two new coordinators on Dino Baber's staff. And there's Garrett Schrader, QB1. He won't be playing tonight, but we're going to hear from Schrader as he gets ready for another season at Orange. Aronde Gatson, his top weapon. Tons of talent about to take the field alongside Rini and Golia. I'm Jay Alter. And Rini, you know, last year Syracuse makes a bowl game positive momentum. They return a lot of that talent. We mentioned the two new coordinators. Yeah. So we've got a lot to look forward to tonight. Yeah, you know, and a lot of veterans, Dino Babers rested them this spring. And I get it. You want them healthy for the fall. But the great thing about that is a lot of young players got a lot of reps, especially at that quarterback battle for number two, right? We're going to see two guys go at tonight. They got a lot of reps this spring and just a lot of young guys with the physicality getting out there, proving themselves to get ready for the fall. You mentioned Coach Babers, and we've got Dino Babers standing by. Coach, we're excited for tonight. You know, this is the culmination of 15 hard spring practices. What can everybody look forward to? Well, I think the guys are going give, to give everybody a, you know, a little a little run for the money, like something to look at. These guys still want to play. They want to come out here and do a good job, and I'm excited to see how they perform. Coach, now I know a lot of the veterans, you, you held them out in the spring, and that's a good thing because they're going to be healthy for the fall, but this is a great opportunity for the young kids to showcase themselves, show the physicality, get on tape, and really set themselves up for when you come back for fall camp. There's no doubt there's going to be some young cats out there. We're going to see some uh, some new members of the family, and uh, I'm excited to see what they can do. You mentioned new members of the family, two new coordinators. What can we expect from them, and how has the staff gelled in this spring? I think so far so good. I think both the coordinators did a fantastic job. Once again, the defense is basically using the same terminology. The offense is still using the same terminology. You know, I think the coordinators and the players have gelled okay. I, I want to see some of these assistant coaches scramble, you know, the in-between guys and see how everything is. And, and Coach, speaking about the, the new coordinators, Rocky Long, you talked about it, kind of one of the creators of the 3-3-5. He, uh, 50 years coaching experience, Coach. He's been coaching so long. He coached against you when you were a player at Hawaii. So going back a long way, you two. Well, I'll tell you what, you didn't have to throw that one out there. <laughs> but, uh, Sorry, Coach. Hey, watch this. He's been good for a long time, and, that's, and we're lucky to have him, and uh, we're excited to see what he can do with our defense this year. Well, we're excited to watch you and your team tonight. Have fun out there, and we'll talk to you at some point later on. All right, gentlemen, have Thanks, a great coach. one. Thank you. Dino Babers, everybody, the head coach of the Syracuse Orange, getting ready for the 2023 Orange and Blue game. A great inside look at how this Syracuse football team is shaping up for the coming fall. Getting you set for the 2023 Orange and Blue Syracuse Spring football game. Rini and Golia, Jay Alter with you in the JMA Wireless Dome. And, you know, Rini, whenever you look at a team for how they're going to shape up in the coming season. You always look back, right? Yeah. And when you can return your starting quarterback, that familiarity, that continuity, as you get a look at Garrett Schrader, just voted team captain a week ago, will do wonders for this Syracuse offense. Well, and not only that, you're going to get a healthy Garrett Schrader. Now, he took all the mental reps, right? He was standing right behind the quarterback quarterbacks as if he was going in the huddle so a lot of mental reps and you see him dressed he's you know, throwing some balls in, in, in warm-ups here not going to play but that is an integral part especially in the ACC who you know I believe top to bottom best quarterback conference in the country you know Garrett Trader he will be ready for the fall by the way we won't see him tonight but he's been taking the mental reps, like you said, Rainey. And Dino Babers told us that the doctors assured us that Schrader will be ready for the fall as good or better. better. Yeah. And what that has allowed, holding him out this spring, is Justin Lampson and Carlos Del Rio Wilson getting those QB1 reps. So here's the great thing. Normally, Schrader would get 60% of the reps in the spring. Lampson and Del Rio Wilson would split 40%. Now they split those rep, reps 50-50. So just look at how much more productivity they had in the spring. So really uh, the battle to watch tonight are those two because let's see who's going to be the number two quarterback going into the fall. Yeah, so even though the trader is dressed, we won't see him. It'll be Lampson and Del Rio Wilson. Let's look at the weapons for Syracuse because a lot of attention was in their run game a year ago. Schrader was a good runner himself, yeah. nine touchdowns, but losing Sean Tucker, how does Syracuse go about replacing that production? Yeah, I mean, it, 
it's hard because he's so good and he was so productive, but they are really big on LaQuint Allen. They like LaQuint Allen. Uh, Jawan Price is another one. They have a good stable of backs, so I think they're pretty happy there. Uh, Aronde Gatson is a matchup nightmare for defenses in the ACC, so really I think the offense is going to kind of go through Gatson if you really want to know the truth because of the matchup issues he presents, but I think they're happy with their skill set. Really, offensive line is what they need to nudge forward. They have to be better next year, and I think they will be. You know, Chris Bleich, the starting right guard from a year ago, he is also one of the veteran players that they're holding out. When you have a redshirt junior that played 12 games for you last year, Rick, yeah. the spring is not exactly necessary because you can depend on him. It's important that the other guys get those reps and they have. And Kalen Ellis is another guy that was injured. They got him back. Enrique Cruz has been playing really well. So I think they're in good position with offensive line. But again, you're going to go as that offensive line goes. A lot of new faces on this offense for Syracuse. A lot of familiar faces. And one of them is Jason Beck, who was elevated from quarterback coach. He's the new offensive coordinator this season for Dino Babers. And here's my conversation with the new Oren Josie. Well, a new season, a new title coach. Thanks for joining us. What's it been like taking over as offensive coordinator? Man, been busy. You know, just a few more questions to answer and, and things to prepare. But I had a nice transition with the bowl game, kind of moving into that role and and working in that and then having these months to prepare for spring. So it's been fun, been busy, um, and, and learning a lot. Well, it's good that you have some continuity at quarterback. Garrett Schrader back for another season starting for Syracuse. Obviously unavailable this spring, but what have you seen from Schrader? Because I hear he's like a shadow out there for you with <laughs> the practices. He's getting all the mental reps. Yeah, he's kind of been standing behind the quarterbacks, so he's just in there for every snap. A little bit in their ear, you know, telling what he's thinking. And so there's at times those guys are turning to him, telling him to back off, I got it, you know. But he's in there. Um, and I kind of talked to him before the spring, like, hey, I want you to be a GA slash quarterback coach. And he's done that. He's been been great, dialed in, watching film, working hard to learn everything he can in the situation he's in. It's really unique. Now you have an opportunity where you're getting 15 practices worth and now a spring game of QB1 reps for guys that never would have gotten these reps. What's that experience been like for your younger quarterbacks? Yeah, I mean, it's been a great opportunity for them. Those two guys have taken almost every rep this spring where before, you know, probably would have been 60% of Schrader taking the reps and splitting those other 40. Instead, they've both got a ton of work. So you have a much better feel of where we're at there, what we can expect from each guy. And it's been a great competition. They've grown, they've improved, and feel really good about where we're at. You know, we all like to focus on the quarterback, but obviously looking at this offense as a whole, what have you been really looking to accomplish in these 15 practices? Just to improve our execution, um, improve our efficiency, um, and develop, especially up front. We have, we'll have a few new pieces up front with the old line, so just getting that uh, continuity established, the leadership of that room, and the direction we'll be headed up front. You obviously have a huge hole in your backfield now. Sean Tucker, one of the best running backs of the country a year ago. How do you go about replacing all that production for this coming fall? You know, we'll kind of spread the wealth to everybody. We feel great about LaQuint, you know, coming in. And he had a really good bowl game to get things off and running. But uh, Jawan's had a great spring. And then we'll kind of just spread that wealth to all the skill guys. You know, last year we leaned heavily on, on Tuck to start the season as we developed and grew those other skill spots. Um, and a little bit opposite this year, we have quite a few skill guys back that we can lean on, look to get the ball to, and... Uh, and just look to be really efficient and sharp on offense. Yeah, including OG, he's back. It's such a weapon for you and really a unique player, tough for defenses. When you return not just a quarterback and Schrader, but probably his, his top weapon, what, what's that like for you? Well, the focus with him, and I, you know, we sat down shortly after you got back on campus to ask him, what is your goals? What do you want to accomplish? And so he had specific things he wanted to improve. And one of the first was blocking. He really wanted to improve his blocking, and, he, and he's done a great job there. But no, we, it is not try to do the same thing, but improve, get better, and, uh, and do more. So we've been working 
um, in that direction for him. Well, the spring game's about to begin here. Are we going to see uh, Garrett Schrader over on the sidelines being like the, the second coach for you? What's his role going to be like today? You know, if anything stays the same, he'll be five, ten yards <laughs> behind the quarterback. So maybe coach will kick him off the field. But for all the other scrimmages, he's been just right back there behind the quarterback. Uh, so even with the spring game, I, that would be the preference. But I don't know. The head guy might overrule that and throw him on the sideline. We'll see. Well, it's a good problem to have when your quarterback's so intense that you've, even when he's not available to play, he's taking the mental reps and you've got to be pulling him back. So exactly. That bodes exactly. well. Coach, we really appreciate the time and the insight. Good luck. You bet. Thanks. Looking forward to seeing that Syracuse offense take the field. Coming up in the orange and blue game, LaQuint Allen and company, they will be in orange. Top 25 defense a year ago, Rini, new defensive coordinator, the veteran Rocky Long, which we touched on. What jumps up out to you on the defensive side of the ball? Well, one that it's going to stay the same, right? 3-3-5, three, three, so very familiar for the players with Rocky Long coming in. I think he's going to put his tweaks into it a little bit. Um, he's just so experienced with this defense, so I think that's the biggest thing. Great defensive players for Syracuse. I think where their issue lies is maybe a little depth. And that's what's important about spring football, these 15 practices, this spring game. What young kids are going to step up and say, hey, I can be a quality backup. I can be a three and get them that depth they need, especially on the back end. Yeah, Caleb Okuchukwu leads that really strong defensive line. A lot of linebackers, too. Unfortunately for us, seeing them on the field won't happen today. Rocky Long joked with us, I got yeah. no available linebackers, so instead of a 3-3-5, it'll be a 4-1-6 for the defense, which really gives a lot of reps to these defensive backs, and they're the least experienced, so it's needed. Yeah, so don't freak out when you're like, they're not running a 3-3-5. It's, it's just personnel is what they got, so Coach Long said, this is what I'm going to run, and you know, and some defenses out there run a 4-2-5, so it gives them some flexibility that maybe we'll see some changes out of this defense next year. We've talked a lot about the new defensive coordinator, Rocky Long. Here's Rini and Golia's conversation with Coach Long. Coach, thanks for joining us. So for those Syracuse fans that might not know, you have 50 years coaching experience. That's not a typo, 50 years, 20 as a head coach. You bring a plethora of experience here to Syracuse. Why Syracuse? And this is obviously the first year you're taking over the defense. Well, when I got tired of being a head coach, I wanted to be a defensive coordinator. And I've been allowed a couple times. And Coach Babers and I are friends from way back. And when he lost his defensive coordinator, uh, when he left to go somewhere else, uh, he called me up and asked me if I wanted to try to do it. And since I know him well and I like him and I know how he runs things, I thought it was a great idea. And the defense they ran here last year was a 3-3-5. That's what you're known for. You were kind of there when it was created, Coach. Uh, I'm guessing you're going to put some wrinkles into it. Uh, one of the things I want to ask you, though, for this spring coming in here, a lot of your veterans kind of sat out spring, kind of a double-edged sword, right, because they're not getting the reps. They're getting the mental reps. But your young players are getting a chance to play. So just kind of give me your assessment of, of spring ball to this point. Well, I, I was pleasantly surprised when I got here because even the young guys understand the concepts of the defense. Now, because of some injury, like you said, some of the guys that played a lot last year that aren't going through spring practice, we have a shortage in some positions. So basically, we're not running the 3-3-5 in the spring game. We're running a 4-2. And sometimes we're running a 4-1 with yeah. six DBs in there. So it's not really what we're gonna run next year, but the concepts are all the same, so they're getting the right number of reps. And we were talking off camera earlier too, and you said one of the biggest adjustments is that you had to make it, right? Because you talked about the terminology being a little different. Instead of the, the players learning a bunch of new signals, you kind of learned some new stuff, right? So even you're learning some, some stuff with 50 years coaching experience. Well, I had to learn a lot of new signals. <laughs> they're, the, they're the exact same calls I'm used to, but you had to signal them different. And, and they got a little confused for the first couple of weeks because I'd throw an old signal in there and they didn't know what that meant. Yeah. Uh, a lot of good veterans coming back on this defense. One of the guys I talked to yesterday, Marlo Wax, was mm -hmm. named captain, one of your linebackers. So I, I, I guess you're going to be excited, right, about the, uh, the veterans you have coming back when you get back into fall and really get after it. Yeah, when they, you know, we have several like that. When they get back out there, I'm sure it's going to be a lot more fun and we get to actually play the defense that we're going to run next year when we get a bunch of linebackers back. But uh, this has really been good for the younger ones because they have to understand the concepts 
to uh, know where they're going to fit next year. Yeah, well, we're looking forward to seeing the young kids compete in the spring game, and uh, best of luck next year. I can't wait to see your defense next year in the ACC. By the way, a lot of good quarterbacks you got to go against next year in this conference. I've already seen them on film, though, I know. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Coach. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it'll be a long offseason preparing <laughs> for just a stacked ACC at the quarterback position. Yeah, no doubt about it. Again, I said it earlier, I think top to bottom best conference in the country with quarterback play and so this defense is going to have their hands full next year so meet brady denneberg out of Merritt island florida in your neck of the woods down yeah. outside orlando he, he's got big shoes to fill i mean replacing a lou groza award winner and andre schmidt but these coaches are really high on denneberg well the thing they love about him is he was a quarterback in high school very athletic had the opportunity to go to some colleges and play quarterback, chose to come here to Syracuse and be a kicker. Max von Marburg, the punter, he returns as a sophomore, but there's been a competition this spring. Jack Stonehouse, the transfer from Missouri, and those two have gone punch for punch all spring, two really talented punters. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna see any punting tonight, but if we did, I guarantee you there'd be some balls hitting the roof because these yeah, guys the can bomb scoreboard. it. Yeah, there's Stonehouse there, the transfer from Missouri. He's got quite the leg, and you'll hear more about him with our sit-down with special teams coordinator, Coach Lig, Bob Ligashevsky. Coach, really appreciate the time. Thanks for joining us. You know, spring practice, you get 15 of these. Give us an insight what you've been looking to accomplish on the special teams front. Yeah, on the special teams, we've been trying to develop a core group of guys. They're going to be involved in all four phases uh, punt, punt return, kickoff, kickoff return. So we've been more competition, live drills, you know, to see guys uh, how they're going to compete in order to be the, the group of guys that we're going to count on in, on all four phases during the fall. And how's the intensity been when you talk about competition? Yeah, it's been really good. You know, the the, uh, the kids have bought into the competition, have fun with it, um, don't want to look bad on tape because it, the next day they know that we're going to show in front of the team. It's never easy when you're trying to replace a Lou Grozo award winner as your place right. kicker, losing Andre and, uh, Schmidt. What's that process been like? Yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, he's a great player. You know, Lou Groza award winner. Um, we feel like we have a, a really good uh, young prospect in Brady Denneberg. Um, he's had a, a good spring, positive spring. Um, but again, uh, we'll see how the transition develops through the summer and the fall. And then you look at punter, you bring in an SEC talent in Jack Stonehouse from Missouri. We were talking with Coach Babers earlier, and he said that he's, he's hitting the ceiling when you go into the indoor facility. Yeah, it's been a really good competition. You know, Jack's done, Jack's been impressive. You know, he has a, a live leg and the ball jumps off his foot. Uh, but again, the same thing uh, through the spring. He uh, has uh, developed it as uh, the guy that's been taking the reps with the ones. But again, that competition will continue to uh, as we go into the fall. Yeah, we still have a lot of practice and football in front of us before we kick it off right. in September. Kind of take us through what that looks like. We leave you kind of sneak peek here in the spring, but what happens next? Yeah, we compete we through the spring, mm -hmm. you know, and then uh, the young men will, will finish the semester with through their finals. They'll get a chance to go home for a little bit, and then we'll come back uh, through the summer and be able to do some workouts with, with those guys as, as the rules have changed. And then we'll get into training camp and then uh, we'll finalize our competition and to continue to progress towards who's gonna be the guys that'll be playing for us in the fall. A good look inside Syracuse special teams. Coach, appreciate the time. Jay, thanks for having me, I appreciate it. Great to hear from all three coordinators of the head coach, Dino Babers. We'll hear from Garrett Schrader coming up as the orange and blue game kicks off next. Back here at the 2023 Syracuse Spring Game, Brady Angolia, Jay Alter with you. So instead of dividing into two teams, the orange team is the offense and the blue team is the defense. That makes it really easy. Garrett Schrader, quarterback one, did not participate in the 15 spring practices. So instead, it's the backup quarterback, Justin Lampson. Take a look at the format, Greeny, and 
explain this for our viewers? Because this is a non-traditional spring game. Tonight. Well, and a lot of teams are doing this now because they're resting players, right? So it's just kind of offense first, defense. You see two 40-minute halves, no scoring. There is ACC officials down here. They'll blow the whistle. They'll spot the ball. They'll call penalties, but they don't really want it going live, right? You want to keep everyone healthy. It's been really physical, by the way, for their spring practices. They're just not going to be super physical tonight. Yeah, priority number one is safety. Keep everybody healthy for the fall. And if you're reading into Justin Lampson getting the first couple of snaps here, don't because Dino Babers told us Lampson and Carlos Del Rio Wilson have split the QB1 reps 50-50. It's just that Del Rio Wilson took the last snap of practice the other day. So now it's Lampson who starts. He's gone to LaQuint Allen on back-to-back -back plays. A lot of eyes on the sophomore out of New Jersey coming out of that backfield. Yeah, and he found Gatson early, too. The thing I like about Lampson there, he went through his progressions, right? He's, he's going one, two to three, boom, check it down. Don't hold it, don't get a sack. Check it down to Allen and get positive yards, pick up a first down, I like that. Lampson out of El Dorado Hills, California. Missed last season with an ACL injury. Great to see him back on the field and healthy. Dino Babers blows the whistle here. I love love the Hawaiian shirt on Coach Babers too. Hey, going back to his roots, why not? Played his college football, actually on defense. Even though he's an offensive guru, going right that's back to Gadsden, and that's no secret. That is no doubt the top target for Syracuse this year. And again. We've talked about it early. He's a matchup problem for defenses. You know, he's a tight end, but he runs like a wide receiver. He's tall. He's got great hands. And again, I really think the offense is going to kind of go through him in that passing game. That was a gain of nine by Gats in his second reception and only four plays. You mentioned earlier matchup nightmare. There's going to be a lot of ACC defensive coaches watching this over the course of the summer thinking, how do we stop that yeah. guy because he's such a mismatch. And Gatson plays that position that NFL teams yes. rule over, right? A, a tight end that you can still put some girth on him, right? He can still get bigger so he can be an inline tight end, but you can put him in the slot, and it's just it's just problems for defensive backs. We've talked a lot of offense. Good test for the defense here, third and one. Put five on the line, trying to stop LaQuint Allen. Can't do it. That'll be a first down for Justin Team Barron. Orange, the offense. Justin Barron out of Rocky Hill, Connecticut. The junior came in to make the stop. It, it's worth repeating, the defense playing with only one yeah. linebacker tonight yeah. because but, of injuries. And I like what LaQuint Allen did there. He, he knew it was short yardage. He didn't kind of tiptoe through the hole, squared those shoulders up and went and got the first down. A non-traditional 4-1-6 for Rocky Long's defense. And he's the godfather of the 3-3-5. So he was joking with us that, look, we're never going to run this even once this fall. Yeah. But it's good for the defensive back guys because they've got the least experience on this roster to be on the field and get as many reps as they can. And I think that's the group, and we talked about it, this, the secondary, right? Probably the least depth, right? So a chance for some young players to step up going into the fall, and, and I think that's going to be a, a, a big part of them. We talk about the quarterbacks they're going to go against, right, in this conference. you got to be strong on the back end. Lampson throwing on the run. Justin nice Lampson throw, nice nice catch. catch. Damian Alford. Great grab from him. He's probably moving into a starting role. Yeah, season. and made up for that drop he had earlier. But a nice job as Lampson rolls out. Just kind of scramble rules. Come back to the quarterback. Does a nice job, does Alford. Coming back down that sideline. Makes the catch. Gets it to third and short. Alford Moore in the supporting cast a year ago. 20 receptions, two touchdowns. Expect a lot of increased production out of number five this coming fall. From Canada. Talked about that, you know. Canadian pipeline. It's funny, Dino Babers, we asked him, do you recruit one area over the other? And he goes, we, we recruit young men all over. We'll take you from anywhere if you fit this system. Yeah, it's national now. You know, when I played in the late 80s, 
early 90s, college is the, the proverbial fence around your area. Right. Now it's national. You're going out there. And international, as, yeah, he, as he said, yeah, absolutely. too. Absolutely. There's Gatsit's third reception. And you see how he just comes back to the ball, catches it with his hands. You know, pitcher perfect there. I think Justin Lampson has looked at number 19, Gadsden, first and foremost before. That's the first read, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good job by the defense there. Good penetration. Looked like they were going to run a reverse. Did a nice job. Caleb Okachukwu, fifth-year senior from the D.C. area, played at St. John's College for high school. Great powerhouse there. And, yeah, not a typo on your screen. He's wearing number four now. Yeah, what do you make of the defensive yeah, lineman that, going to those single-digit the numbers? They, they love those single-digit numbers, you know? He called himself C4. We actually got to chat with him for a while. Yesterday and today, he hosts the Mob Podcast. He and Marlo Wax do a great job. Great to get student-athletes to be yeah. so transparent. They'll do 45 minutes, 50 minutes. Yeah. Great podcast. I can tell you what, with Caleb, uh, the numbers he has, he can wear any number. That's he true. You know, <laughs> Coach Babers will let him wear any number. Anchors that defensive line, and they'll have their ears pinned back here on a third and 19. Okachukwu busting in. He got the pressure there before Lampson got it off to LaQuint Allen, well short of the first down marker. A nice job by the defense there. You give him that little dump down on, on third and really long. Just come up. Come up and make sure you make a sure tackle. Okachuku so explosive off the edge. Yeah. Would have definitely got a hit on the quarterback there yes. if it was live. <laughs> Lampson's saying thank you for not uh, going live tonight because that one would have hurt. So now we'll get a quarterback change for Syracuse again. The quarterback that'll start in the fall is Garrett Schrader, transfer from Mississippi State. He played last year for the Orange, 17 passing touchdowns, nine rushing touchdowns. He probably could have played this spring, but Dino Baber said, let's not push it. We know what he's capable of. He's gotten plenty of reps, and it's allowed a great quarterback competition to emerge for QB2. We just saw Justin Lampson. This is Carlos Del Rio, transfer from Florida. And by the way, I thought Lampson looked really good. Made some, Me nice, too. made some nice throws, some good reads. We haven't seen him in, in a year. He was out with that ACL injury. Del Rio okay, Wilson right, handing it off to Juwan Price on first down. Price will be the secondary back behind LaQuint Allen this fall. They really like him as a one-two punch. Well, and, and, and Price has really good burst, right? And he's got that great build that I like. 5'10", 202, good low center of gravity, hits the hole hard. Del Rio Wilson, nice pocket, throws for the first time and misfires. Imari Hatcher, the intended target. See, if I'm Del Rio Wilson, I'm thinking, I know Lamson got the QB1 reps tonight, Put Gadsden back on the field for me. I mean, a lot of those receptions were going to the star tight end. They call him OG. That would have been a sack there. Great pressure. Kayvon Darton. Shot out of a cannon here. Great yeah. explosion. Nice job by Darton as he gets underneath that block. A little rip technique and would have gotten a sack there, no doubt. A quick three and out forced by the defense. Defense definitely won that rep. We'll talk more Garrett Schrader. Hear from QB1 when we come back. The Syracuse spring game continues on ACC Network. Getting a spring sneak peek at the Syracuse spring game here. Indy Angolia, Jay Alter with you. Orange and blue game. Garrett Schrader, the team captain, QB1. You won't see him on the field today, but he got plenty of reps a year ago as the starting quarterback for this team, and we're joined by Garrett Schrader now. Garrett, thanks for taking the time. First and foremost, I got to ask the question that everybody's thinking about. How are you feeling? Man, I feel phenomenal. It's uh, a lot of credit to our training staff, you know, Brandon Hall and his staff, and uh, 
everything's been going well. Just trying to keep the, trying to do too much at one time and uh, just take it slow and trust the process. Gary, let me ask you now, a lot of mental reps this spring, which is good, I mean, like your rest, like we're talking about. Um, but kind of talk about, you've had four different offensive coordinators in your career, I believe. And so the fact that Jason Beck comes back, right, gets the offensive coordinator job, it must have made you feel really good. Absolutely. There's, I've had a lot of change, and this is my uh, this will be my fifth OC, and uh, wow. coming up on my fifth yep. year. And uh, but luckily we'll keep the offense. And um, I mean, we've made a ton of progress, and we are light years ahead of where we were last year at this time. And it's been awesome to watch the young guys go out and just get better every day. And uh, it's been a process, but you know, I'm grateful, and I'm, you know, we have a lot of trust in uh, Coach Beck and what he's bringing, and the rest of the offensive staff. And um, you know, it's it's been exciting, and we're, it's been a process, but we, we've been enjoying it. We just saw a really nice deep ball from your teammate, Carlos Del Rio Wilson. What's it been like watching these guys taking the mental reps? And also, Coach Beck told us that they've kind of had to pull you back because you've been so into it watching Lampson and Del Rio Wilson go at it this spring. Absolutely. I mean, I, those guys have been doing a phenomenal job, setting the standard from, from the quarterback room in, in terms of the program. And uh, they made huge strides from just getting better every single day. And uh, yeah, I stand. I typically stand behind the offense, and uh, today they keep me on the sideline, which has kind of been frustrating. But uh, it's it's been good. It's been good. Now, Garrett, you got some good weapons coming back, but one guy in particular kind of stands out. They call him OG or Ronde Gatson. He's a matchup nightmare for defenses. Kind of talk about him as a target and and what you expect for next season. Yeah, man, he's a he's a big guy. You know, he's he's about six four, six five, and uh, he's he's really shifty. And uh, but most importantly, you know, he's a He's a really hezzy player. He knows how to get open in zone, and he creates space man to man. And night, he's a he's a matchup problem for those safeties. So it's been it's been awesome throwing to him, and hopefully we'll be able to build on what we did last year and going forward this year. You know, obviously, we would have loved to see you today in the orange and blue game, but Coach Babers said that taking the precaution, and the doctors assured him that you would be as good or better for the fall. I, I'm going to key in that or better. What are you looking to improve going into this next season? Yeah, I mean, just mechanically, it's been uh, it's been tough the past couple of years. I've had I've, you know, I've had this injury for a while now, and it's uh, it's affected the way I played and can't really be my true self. So this, I feel like this will be the first year in a long time that I'll be completely healthy, and uh, I'm really excited about that. Especially just not about me, but the guys that we have around me, and uh, the, from the offensive line room to the receivers and the defense and everybody, the way everybody's been getting better, it's been awesome, and uh, I've really been enjoying it. Well, you can't see it, but we just saw a flea flicker. Double, little, double reverse pass, double reverse. Garrett, so, yeah, it looked good. It was incomplete, but <laughs> I, I like the play call. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we appreciate the time, and we'll let you get back to being, I would say, assistant yeah. quarterback coach. Listen, we can't wait to see you next year. Yes. ACC, some of the best quarterbacks in the country. You're one of them. Can't wait to see you next year, my man. Absolutely. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Yeah, Rini said it. ACC is a quarterback league and one of the best. Garrett Schrader. So excited to see him this fall. They're letting Del Rio Wilson rip it right now. A lot of these have gone incomplete, yep. but they're letting them air it out. I was too busy looking at Schrader. Well, I, I thought I, Fleet, I saw someone handed it off, but it's a double well, reverse. You know, defensive coordinator Rocky Long is probably like, what are you guys doing to me? <laughs> double reverse? I can't run my 3 3 5. I got to say, Rocky Long's defense getting the better of yeah. the Orange offense so far in this Syracuse spring game. You mentioned that continuity, Rini. How much does it benefit this Syracuse team that they had the 3 3 5 defense already installed before Rocky Long yeah. got here? Well, you heard Coach Long say, really, he had to make the adjustments because some of his signals were different, but the terminology was the same. So that goes a long way uh, to really help because when you come in and you put in a new defense like a 3 3 5, to a team that maybe ran a 4-4 or a 3-4. It, it is tough, but they already ran it, so they're in, in good shape. And I'm sure Dino Babers took that into consideration when he brought Rocky Long on as a defensive coordinator. 46-yard punt for the transfer out of Missouri, Jack Stonehouse. Dino Babers was so excited they landed this kid in the transfer portal. And, and we were speaking with athletic director John Wildhack in the booth over from us before the game. He said, in the ACC, you've got to win all three phases. Yeah. I loved that he said that because Syracuse really went out, looked at the transfer portal, and prioritized a punter, and they landed an awesome one in Stonehouse. I think out of all the kickers, the punter is the most underrated because you're, you know, you're 
field position, right? So you need a good punter, a good coverage team, and they think they got a couple good punters here. So. Meanwhile, all the Syracuse fans listening to us right now are thinking, talking we don't want to see the punter. We're talking about punters for. Every drive is going to be a touchdown. <laughs> the diehards know how important special yes. teams is, especially the punter. So. so back to Justin Lampson in a quarterback, and with that, the starters, at least right now on the depth chart. Now, a lot can change between. This is just the final practice, 15, the culmination of 15 spring practices. A good inside look, but it's not definitive. No, but if you're a young player, you didn't get a lot of reps last year, this is a chance to really get on film, show your effort, make a play, and put yourself in a good position before fall camp starts. Too much on that one from Lampson trying to go back to Alford. You know, spring really is a lot when it's all said and done about player evaluation, right? Evaluate the players, and again, we've talked about it. A lot of the veterans sitting out, so the young players have a chance to show what they can do. As Coach Babers would say, some young cats out there. Really enjoyed our conversation with Coach Babers going in to year number eight. They had an incredible start a year ago, 6-0. It was in that seventh game on the road against Clemson. Another great pass to Aronde Ganson. He has been the top target and then some and takes it all the way in for a touchdown. The defense is saying the officials blew well, that they one did. dead. They, they did. Well, I mean, so here's the, the, the matchup issue we're talking about. Uh, he had a corner on him, Jason Simmons, right? A smaller corner. Gatson's so big, and he's actually going to hold Gatson. He's, he's holding him around the waist, which is pass interference in and of itself. The flag doesn't come out, but Gatson still makes the catch, and then you see him spin, and you see that speed with that big body. He's got a lot of talent. Back to what I was saying. So 6-0, you're ranked number 14 in the country. You give Clemson everything they can handle yeah. in their plays. And then some injuries come. They lost seven of their top 22 after starting 6-0. 22 starters, that is. I still think there's a lot of positive momentum, a lot of talent coming back, including Garrett Schrader, who we just spoke to. Where do you think the orange lines up in the ACC? Well, and here's the one thing we didn't talk about is no more divisions in the ACC. Just, oh, true. Just all together, right? So the top two teams at the end of the year, I think they're middle of the pack, right? You know, I... I Last week, I, I did the North Carolina spring game, and I said on air there, I think Florida State's going to win the ACC. That's my way too early prediction. I think Clemson's going to be back, and North Carolina's a team that looks good. But I think, you know, Syracuse is in a good position if they can get some of these young players to stuff, get some depth. But their schedule looks tough, the middle of that schedule. So you go three weeks in a row playing Clemson, then at North Carolina, at Florida State. That's a really tough stretch for the Orange. But I do think they're going to surprise sure. people. And, but, I mean, that stretch right there arguably is the first, second, and third best teams in True. the conference. They, but, you know, they may not be there by the time that part of the season comes, but you got to beat them, right? They're in the conference. So Now, that said, nobody thought Syracuse would Correct. start 6-0 a year Correct. ago. And again, you return a lot of talent, particularly on the defensive side of the ball and your quarterback, Garrett Schrader. I just think there's some momentum. There's some positivity after going 7-5, and five, making a bowl game, returning all these guys. And, and you're number eight for Dino Babers. He feels like they can win a lot more games than yeah. maybe the local media thinks they will. And since we're talking schedule, right, they open up Colgate at home, Western Michigan home. You got to go 2-0. and You have to go 2-0. No doubt about that. And then you got it. You go to Purdue, right? That's going to be a tough game. A team you beat last year. Big rematch. That was Correct. one of the best college football games all season. Went down to the wire. If you can win that game on the road, you get Army at home. You know, not a, not an easy game, but one you should win. You're four and zero going up uh, uh, against Clemson. You might have college game day in town yeah. for that game. So you know, talking schedule. It's all about the start for Syracuse next year. You got to get off to a good start. Quint Allen, the sophomore out of Millville, New Jersey. He's got huge shoes to fill with Sean Tucker departing. They really like what he brings to the table. 
he got some good reps a year ago yeah. behind Tucker, but now really steps into the spotlight. And, and I think they like kind of that two-headed monster approach of LaQuint Allen and Juwan Price. Uh, so look for those two to get the lion's share of the carries. Lampson right on the money. First touchdown of the night, Isaiah Jones. Great grab. 33-yard strike. Nice route by Jones. Good separation and a beautiful ball by Justin Lampson. Puts it right there. Nice catch. And, and I'm with you, Jay. If you're Carlos Del Rio Wilson, you're like, Lampson's getting he has the ones in there, baby. Come on, you know, but nice throw by Lampson. Nice route by Jones and a good hookup for the touchdown. Yeah, Jones, a nice big body, six foot four, 205. The Syracuse, when you look at their wide receivers or their tight end, Aronde Gatson, they've got some really nice yeah. size that can expose some secondaries. You, you have six, four, six, five receivers and tight ends that can run. That's problems for those smaller defensive backs because Jones is from Central Florida as well. Coco, Coco High School. So if he's from Florida, you know he can run. Six and zero start, five and two at the JMA Wireless Dome. You make a bowl game, the Pinstripe Bowl in Yankee Stadium. Lost to Minnesota. I, I think the one thing I wanted to key on reading: seventeen players made their first collegiate start, and a lot of those players are coming back. Yeah, and the reason why seventeen players made their first collegiate start: they had a lot of injuries last year. Now, coaches don't like to use injuries as an excuse. Dino Babers did not. But it's just a fact of the game, right? A lot of injuries and a lot of key injuries last year that they had to deal with. And when you're ranked number 14 in the country, 6-0, and and those injuries come, you're frustrated. But yeah. Dino Babers was reflective and said, you know what? I was mad at the time, but now I'm really happy that we had that experience because it's really going to help us for this coming season. Almost an interception. Great read. Malcolm Falk did a really nice job. Reading the eyes of Del Rio Wilson. Yeah, Folk playing that safety position. Jumps on this one. Nice job breaking it up. Almost gets the interception. But getting back to what you said, Jay, as well, though. Yeah, the season started great. Didn't quite finish the way they wanted, but they fought through it, right? They, they kept yeah. playing hard. They make it to a bowl game. So a lot to build on, as you talked about earlier and particularly with this defense. Now, the question mark is the secondary. But you look at that front six in this 3-3-5, three, three, the front six is really promising. Yeah, I mean, I think the defensive line, in my opinion, no doubt is the strength of that defensive unit. Some really good linebackers as well. And yeah, the back end's gonna get tested. There's no doubt about it. Again, with the quarterbacks they're gonna face, uh, a lot of these guys will be on islands. Uh, the officials are earning it tonight. Yeah. We, we saw a flag, so this is a face mask here. Face mask. I think they could have let that go. Yeah. It just kind of <laughs> came across a little bit, but it's a spring you game. know, the, the refs are you know, knocking the cobwebs off as well. Yeah, the refs are earning it, just like the players out there. Yeah, Porter's like, yeah, I didn't grab it. It just kind of came across it. And actually, by rule, that wasn't a face mask. Quick hitter to the flat. Mario Escobar gets his first touch. He's a team favorite, Dino Babers told us. He runs really hard out of Long Island, played his high school football at St. Anthony's, and he offers a different threat. And he's a big special teams player. Yes. He's that guy that's going to make plays on special teams. You see him catching the ball out of the backfield, you love that. So, you know, a lot of these guys like Mario Escobar, they're kind of fighting for that third running back spot. Uh, when we come back in the fall. But the fact that Escobar has nice hands out of the backfield, plays a lot of special teams, bodes well. Sticking with the ground game and Escobar. Escobar. You know, on the last play, the tackle was made by a fifth-year senior, Yosuke 
Sugano. Take a look, 31 in blue. One of the great stories in all of college football. He was born in Japan. One of four college football players to come out of Japan. He started his college career at St. Francis PA, FCS yeah. level, and now he's playing at the FBS level, transferring up to Syracuse. Awesome story. Great story, great effort. You see him come inside out there to make that tackle on Escobar, so you just love that effort. And there's the freshman shooting out David Omar Piola out of Baltimore, Maryland, and he's a great story too. We're getting a lot of great stories on defense making plays, Rainey, because he should be a senior in high school right now. He enrolled early after signing in the early signing period. And look at that, getting on the field already, making a big play. And kids like that are so young, getting that experience. And then once they get in the weight room, right, get into that strength and conditioning program, they're gonna get a lot more muscle on them. He's gonna be a good one. Obo Pariola, name to keep an eye on. Del Rio Wilson maybe taking advantage there of the fact you can't touch the quarterback. There's a flag down as well. But he's showing you the wheels he has, you know, and he's, you know, Del Rio Wilson's a good sized quarterback, 6'2, 232, and he's got some good speed when he gets outside of the pocket. And due to injuries, Del Rio Wilson got thrust into a couple of games last season and Dino Babers told us he's just improved so much. Those were reps that he had to take, and now in the spring, getting those quality reps, and he's seen his game be a lot more consistent. Yeah, and it is. It's about all the reps, and we talked about it. If Garrett Schrader was here this spring, you know, Carlos Del Rio Wilson, his, his reps would have been very limited, but now he's splitting them, or did split them with Justin Lampson this entire spring, and I think both of them made huge strides. Out of play action, right in the bread basket. Hatcher hangs on. And good concentration by Hatcher, because you know the safety's sitting there, right? And Tommy Porter was right there and gave him a little love for a teammate. Omo Pariola, one of four early enrollees for Syracuse. And that amazes me, Rini. You could, you should be getting ready for your yeah. senior prom right now, and instead you're on a college campus already getting quality reps. Rocky Long sends the kitchen sink on a third and 12, a blitz package there for the Orange. Dennis Jaquez, first to pressure the quarterback. Yeah, quick whistle there. They don't want the quarterback getting hit, but nice job by Carlos Del Rio Wilson throwing this thing up. He would have gotten it off. He wouldn't have been sacked. But good pressure up the middle, no doubt. Get to see a field goal attempt for the first time in this Syracuse spring game. It's Brady Danneberg. Big shoes to fill with Lou Grozo award winner Andre Schmidt. Likely probably going to make at least a roster yeah. in the NFL, right? He's going to get a chance. There's no doubt about that. 49-yard kick. How about this for a debut for Denneberg? Try and drill a near 50-yarder. Oh, he's got plenty of leg. And missed it, but not because of the power, it was the accuracy that was off for Denneberg. That would have sailed for at least 55. Yeah, a little wide right, just didn't turn it over. Got to get a little draw spin on it, you know, like a five iron. Like you know what you're talking about, <laughs> kicking a football, Rainey. We're going to give him another shot, though. So oh, Dino Baber says take another one. <laughs> Plenty of leg, and this time it's right down the middle. Mulligan. Mulligan. Second, second shot All-American, they call it. Second <laughs> kick All-American, hey. <laughs> Left hash, beautiful. Hold on, we gotta break the tie. It's like rock, paper, scissors. So one and one. Here's the grudge match here for Denneber. I say he drills it. I think he's, a, he's really good from the hashes. And just like Rini's driver, no good. Oh. Not in the fairway. That one sailed on him. I'll say all three attempts from about 50 yards 
Denenberg has plenty of leg if he can get it straight a little more accurate. Coming up next, we'll hear from the defensive captain, Marlo Wax, stud linebacker on the other side. The Syracuse spring game, orange and blue game rolls on here at the JMA Wireless Dome. Marini and Golia, Jay Alter with you. It's a great inside look at what to expect this coming fall for the Orange 7-5 and five a year ago. They return a lot of talent, particularly on the defensive end, including Marlo Wax, team captain, just voted a couple of weeks ago. He really is the headliner, if you will, on defense for the Orange. No doubt about it. Marlo, thanks for joining us. What do you think about the defensive play so far? I know a lot of the veterans like you are sitting up, but kind of assess the young guys out there. Look like they're getting after it. Yeah, for sure. I just see the uh, young guys just coming up, getting a lot of reps, just being able to get ready for the season and just get into that role and just making a lot of plays. I love to see it. Now, Marlo, fortunately for the offense, we're not keeping any kind of score because Rini and I were just talking. It seems like the defense is getting the better of, <laughs> of Team Orange, the offense, so far tonight. Yeah, for sure. You know there's always the plan. Defense, we love to go out there and mob. It's always you beat the offense. We really just love competing. It's, it's fun, though. Now talk about Rocky Long, new defensive coordinator. Now the good thing, Marlo, is you're going to be running the same defense. I'm sure he's going to have some tweaks, but just kind of talk about this spring, what you've learned from him, and, and what we can expect in the fall. Really, he can just do it all. He's a guru. He knows it all. We all know that he was around when the defense was first made. Just He just he knows a lot of different schemes, and just he's going to help us just attack different offenses during the season. I just can't wait. Now, Marlo, you host the Mob podcast. You're extremely well-spoken, so don't take offense to me correcting you here. He wasn't around when defense was invented. <laughs> no, it was the 3-3-5. Three, three, yeah, my bad. I'm sorry. No, no, <laughs> my bad. You know that's what I meant. No, he's been coaching for 50 <laughs> years, but the, he, he was in the room when yeah. they invented uh, the 3-3-5. Sure. I meant to say the defense. And, Marlo, I think you should get him on the Mob podcast. I think with all yeah. that knowledge, he would be a great guest. What do you think? Would do you, Coach do Long you have, do well? Do you have coaches on, or is that, you know, no. off limits? No, we haven't had a coach yet but coach long you know he's definitely gonna be valid he's definitely gonna be a part of the mob he could definitely come on anytime he wants he's got some great stories he actually was telling us that he coached against dino babers yeah. long was at new mexico babers was playing for hawaii in what 1979 79, 79 yeah that's, that's crazy man that's that's a lot of football he knows and just I'm just happy to uh, pick his brain this season and get ready for it. Now, Marla, what I love about you, what people probably don't know, you told us, we talked to you the last couple of days, you were kind of shy at first, talking <laughs> on camera, doing the podcast. You look great, my man. I mean, you're, you're great. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, I've definitely been the laid back guy out of everybody. Never was the guy in front of the camera, never, never speaking, but... I guess it's just how it is now. I definitely feel like I got better and more comfortable with yeah, it, for I, sure. I probably shouldn't give you this encouragement because you're probably going to take my job in like three or four years. So, <laughs> no, you know, whatever. Nah. Y'all doing great at this job, man. I love, love how y'all doing. I appreciate y'all coming out here for us. Uh, we're having a lot of fun. Great to get an inside look at the team for the fall. What have you noticed this spring? What would you say your biggest takeaway is with this group? Just like how we said, just the young guys stepping in, just seeing how prepared they are, seeing how hungry they are, just to go out there and take a different role and just being ready, being ready to be that guy and just taking lead for the next guy next to them. And, and Jay mentioned it earlier, but I just want to say congratulations being named team captain. I know what an honor that is and to be a leader, so c congrats on that. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. I appreciate well, it. It's definitely a dream come true, something I've been thinking about since I was young, but now I'm definitely grateful for my, all my guys just voted, 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 voted me for that. Thank you. And you're going to hear more from Marlo Wax and his teammate Caleb Okachuku coming up at halftime. You're going to get a sneak preview of season two of the Mob podcast. Yeah. Marlo, we appreciate the time. Thank you. I appreciate y'all coming out. Y'all do a great job. And we really have fun. Thank Thanks, you. Marlo. Good luck next year, buddy. Appreciate it. Now, Marlo Wax, don't be fooled. He flashes that smile. He speaks really oh, he'll hit well. You. He is a yeah. monster like on a the bullet. field. Like In between bullet. the lines, you do not want to get hit by Marlo Wax, number two in blue yeah 62240 runs like a you know a running back and he'll uh he'll hit you future pro too yeah no doubt just fits the nfl versatility wise right absolutely and we haven't talked a ton about the offensive line tonight Reedy, and they are without starting right guard Chris Bleich. I want maybe to take the next couple of plays to assess 
the five up front for yeah. the Orange because that's probably the biggest question mark on offense. And, and the hardest thing for that unit is you need to have continuity, co cohesiveness, right? You need to play together, five working as one. So it can be hard when you have injuries, guys step out. So the biggest thing for that unit is to be healthy and ready to go in fall camp, get that continuity and cohesiveness I talked about, and really just get going. And so, again, I think that unit, integral part. I mean, you can have all the great skill players you want. You got to win the game up front on offense. So that unit's going to be big for Syracuse next year. Good protection there. Lampson got it away, but a little behind. Trevor Pena. Pena will be a top target for the Orange this coming fall. This one just a little behind him. And Pena was a player this spring. I think that, you know, coaches know his ability, knew his ability. He stepped up. I think he's had a nice spring and he's going to be very productive next year. Had 22 receptions a year ago as a sophomore. You know, stepping into a much bigger role come this fall. Pressure coming again. Lampson knocked down at the line of scrimmage. This defensive line getting a really nice push tonight. Yeah. And, and when you get that push, you put the hands up, right? You know, getting back to wide receivers, though, Jay, someone of that group is going to have a standout year. And you want to know why? Because so much attention is going to be placed on Oronde Gatson by defenses. Is There's going to be holes for other receivers to exploit that. So some of these guys are going to have some big games out of that wide receiving core for Syracuse. Now the defense gets another win there, a third down, and Rocky Long again dialing up some pressure. He's been frustrating the quarterbacks tonight in the Syracuse spring game. We'll step aside as the orange and blue game rolls on. Syracuse spring game, orange and blue. The offense in orange, the defense in blue. A little sneak peek, if you will, of what's to come in the fall of 2023. This is a really proud program, great history. And going into the College Football Hall of Fame, Dwight Freeney, a 2023 College Football Hall of Fame inductee. Played for the Orange from 1998 to 2001. First team All-American, 34 career sacks, and obviously a storied NFL career as well. Won a Super Bowl, yeah. three-time All-Pro. 16 NFL seasons, I mean, that's incredible. I mean, Dwight Freeney, had a phenomenal career here at Syracuse and then really a phenomenal career in the NFL as well. So well-deserved. Congratulations to him. You grew up in Rochester, yeah. were, was recruited to Syracuse in the 90s when they were really a perennial power. And you said growing up in the state of New York, if you were a great player in this state, you didn't think twice. You just went to Syracuse. Yeah, and you know, and I, I grew up in the Dick McPherson era, right? The late, great Coach Mack, phenomenal. He's in the Hall of Fame himself. Um, and he, he took pride in that. If there was a good player in New York State, he was keeping them in New York State and bringing them to Syracuse. And a lot of great players. You know, I, I grew up in Rochester, which is Section 5, just down the road. If you were a great player in Section 5, you came to Syracuse. Coach Mack, God rest his soul. Yep. Greeny, no ill will, even though he pulled your scholarship after you tore your ACL senior year, right? Yeah, I mean, I hurt my knee, but in, in odd twist of fate, it was Coach Mack was the reason I got a scholarship at UMass. He called then Coach Jim Reed, who had coached under him for years, and said, hey, give this guy a scholarship. So I still got a scholarship because of Syracuse, so it's all good. We were talking about Dwight Freeney getting inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. You're next. You look at what Reeney and Golia did over his four years at UMass. It stacks up. We'll see. I'll slide you that 20 after the uh, game, Jay. Thank Only 20? Well, you know. Well, if I get in. Out of zero. <laughs> if I get in, we'll see. Now, listen, just being on the ballot. I, exactly. Sounds cliche, but just being on the ballot is an honor. Tremendous so, honor. Uh, yeah, we'll see. You never know. When you think of Syracuse greats in that era, who, who stand out? Well, you know, Donovan McNabb of course. comes out. You know, and I'm a, I'm a little older, so... Uh, the running back before me, David Walker, who's from Rochester, New York, I always watched him play. Just a lot of great players. And, and again, they were national powers in the, in the early 90s. And obviously that's what everyone aspires for this program to get back there. Um, those were the Big East days, of course. But now in the ACC, they, you know, they have the ability and the schedule to get there. 
third and four, which is really the best rep you could have if you're an offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator in a spring game, because both the offense wants to move the chains, the defense wants to get that stop, offense picks it up there. Yeah, good route by, by Kendall Long, nice catch using those hands, good quick throw. And you're right, third and short, third and medium, you gotta pick those up to keep those drives alive. And it was a nice throw there. Really nice rep for both units. You just wanna be able to simulate that. Not that this is a real game because there's no tackling, but with fans in the stands, and they've been going at it for 15 practices this spring, but this one, Probably has a little more juice to it, right, Randy? Well, again, it's player evaluation, right? So the coaches are going to watch. This is the last film they're going to watch until fall season, right? Until fall camp for that player evaluation. So, you know, you want to make some plays. You want to stand out. And you just want to put yourself in a really good position going into fall camp. And the fourth quarterback on the depth chart, Luke McPhail, redshirt sophomore at a Boston, Massachusetts, in the game right now for the Orange. Pressure coming on the run. McPhail did really well to escape the pocket, deliver a really well-thrown ball. Kyle Acker, the reception. Okay, good job by McPhail. Climb that ladder in the pocket. Little happy feet, but he does a nice job to compose himself, rolls out of the pocket and throws a nice ball on the sideline. Nice catch by Acker, takes a big hit. Out of bounds, gets the third manageable here. Once again, great game rep in this spring game for both offense and defense. They blew it dead. Defense got in there. Dennis Jacquez again. That's his second hurry of the night. Another good throw by McPhail, though, on third down. Even though they blew it dead, finished the throw, got it to his receiver in stride. So nice job there. He's saying, I, listen, coach, I would have got it off. I wasn't getting sacked. Yes, I, I think... All the quarterbacks tonight are thinking a little bit of a quick whistle well, from the officials. But you want that, of right? course. Of you, just, course. you just don't want a freak injury, and, and Dino knows that, and that's why quick whistle. The Dino Babers, all smiles, 55 plays that'll end the quote unquote first half, yeah. if you will. Anything particular stand out to you, Rainey? Yeah, I thought the play of Justin Lampson was really good. But, of course, when you're throwing it to OG, I think that helps. But it would be interesting to see what Dino has to say. We'll probably take a 10-minute break and come back with 55 or so more plays as we're joined by the head coach, Dino Babers. Coach, curious, your impressions of those 55 plays. Well, first of all, I thought we got had some plays made in the inside by Aronde, but we kind of figured that was going to happen. But uh, not 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 too bad. We got to get the quarterbacks to settle down a little bit. We saw the uh, one of the corners missed a really nice interception over there. And then it's a little bit when you're when you're playing thud football with the ones, you really don't see the uh, the contact fumbles and the, the breakups because of the physicality of the game and. Uh, that's what makes the game so great is the legal physicality of it. So. Now, Coach, talking about the, the quarterbacks, I thought Lampson looked good. Of course, he had Gatson as a big target out there, and, but he, I thought he looked pretty good early on. Yeah, I thought I thought he did some things. I, I Both of them need to settle down a little yeah. bit for me, though. I mean, we we have uh, high expectations, and those guys are going to meet every last one of them, but so high standards there. You've been coaching offense for a long time, Dino, and usually you guys set up in a 3-3-5. Rocky Long dialing up the 416 tonight. Have you ever gone against something like that? Yeah, in practice. <laughs> <laughs> for, the, for the last 14 practices. Thanks, Coach. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Dino Babers, the Orange head coach. About midway through this Syracuse spring game. Getting some really good reps this spring. Uh, a sneak preview of what's to come this fall for the Orange. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Mob Podcast. My name is Caleb Okachuku, starting defensive end here. Marlo Wack, starting linebacker. All right, Marlo, you know, it's, it's, it's spring ball right now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's our spring game, got our spring game today. So I think everything is, you know, going to be fun for us. How you been? I've been feeling good, man. Just getting ready, getting ready for the guys. Have fun. 
Uh, I think uh, that we're doing it, you know, a little bit special. We got, you know, everything that we've been doing is, is all off season, anything like that. But we, we always got special things about sleeve. Of course, man. you know, it's, it's, it's the mob, it's the mob podcast. We got it a little bit differently. With that being said, you know, today we got two ESPN hosts joining mm-hmm. us today on the Mob Podcast, and that is our guys, Jay and Rini. Uh-huh. What's up, guys? How, How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Marlo, what's, what's up? What's up? Nice to see you. How y'all doing? Marlo, what's up, buddy? Thanks for what's having up? us. No problem. How y'all feeling today? We're pumped. We're Excellent. excited. Yeah. yeah. A lot of changes. I mean, last time you did a Mob Podcast, it was what, the bowl game? Bowl game. Yeah. yeah. yeah it was definitely different for us in person. So. In person, too. Yeah, live, the live thing. It was good. Up in New York really City. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. Mm-hmm. That was fun. So you've had a lot of changes. New defensive coordinator. Yeah. Coach, yeah, Coach Long. Hey, good guy, the, man. The guru of the yeah. 3 right there. He created right all of it. Yep. Yeah. So I talked to Coach Long yesterday. Uh, was kind of there when the three three five mm-hmm. was created, right? So you sure. excited to play for him? Yeah, yeah, for sure. He just he he knows it all. He's a great coach. We're just happy to see how it's going to be in the fall. And congratulations to you, named team <laughs> captain, one of them, right? Yes, thank you, thank you. Three thank more you. captains to be named. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know he the next one, man. But it's, hey, but let's, 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 let's <laughs> definitely a great feeling. Man. You know what I love about the Mob Podcast is you, it's just so rare you get student athletes that yeah. are so transparent. What made you want to do something like this? Oh, uh, you know, well, myself, um, Jihad and Marlo, um, last camp, we came together and just, you know, like, we watched a lot of I Am Athlete and the Pivot, so mm-hmm. we thought that we could do the same thing on the college level, you know, with our personalities, and it kind of took off. Right yeah, now. for sure. It's, it's been great. We're going to keep on going with yeah, it, though. Yeah, it's been really fun. We got to get you guys an NIL deal next. So, so you got the Gatorade out here, maybe a little, <laughs> maybe a little merchandise. To. I don't got know. We need, we need something like that. We that, do. Definitely the plan for this uh, coming up season, season, for sure. Monetize this, for sure. So yeah. NIL deals, we, we, we want it for y'all, for sure. down to the mob podcast. <laughs> what would be the dream NIL deal? Uh, I'm really big into clothes. Mm-hmm. So okay. any clothing brand, you know. That wants to need them, needs a model or something off the field. I can definitely do that. I yeah. love my beard, so <laughs> yeah. you feel me? a little razor, you know, uh, skin anything, products, you know, anything, I'm, I'm in all that. So anything, 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 any any food spies, anything. Yeah. They know I love to eat. So yeah, I'm athletic wear, uh-huh. athlete. So so yeah. this is kind of the start of season two of the yeah. Mob Podcast. Yeah. And I think my favorite segment from season one is Mobster of yeah. the Week. Yeah. So give me a little Mobster of the Spring. Uh, <sighs> who you got? I think I got Zeke, man. Isaiah Johnson, man. He's been balling out. He just stepping into that role, leadership role, and just been making crazy plays every single day. No, for sure. I think that um, the DBs as a whole are kind of, they all kind of yeah, stepped up. Yeah, for like, sure. Another guy, B.L. Braylon Osborne. Mm-hmm, he, definitely. Just, the way he's been, like, more confident with everything on the field, you see it. For so, sure, for sure. Shout out to those two guys. For, for sure. Real. Well, I got to have one since you guys got a lot of new coaches, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Offense yeah. aside, though, tight end coach, Nunzio Campanile. Yeah, 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 so listen. Yeah. You're <laughs> taking mobster a little too literally. <laughs> you guys, all I'm going to say is you better bring some cannoli stuff yeah, before the start of practice, okay? <laughs> no, sure, I like that one. Sure, I, like yeah, I like that one. Yeah. I like that one. Yeah. That's different. We got to tell them that. <laughs> Spring is all about earning a spot on the depth chart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are we doing tryouts for seat number three? You got a, you got a spot Ooh. open here on the Mob Podcast. Man, that's That's been some big conversations. The yeah, locker room the locker guys room. been fighting to get in that chair. We don't know right now, though. They, go got, they gotta be worthy, though. For yeah, it. We yeah. gotta, so we gotta figure that gotta out. Gotta be different to be on the pod. And you <laughs> definitely gotta have tryouts, especially if you're gonna get an NIL deal, right? Yeah. You can't bring just anybody That's in here. Facts, yeah. though. Maybe we'll add a little offensive guy. Maybe. <sighs> You gotta be a good guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotta be a good guy. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta o- hang with the OG, defense. maybe, you know, someone. Yeah, you know, that's, that's a good guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we still gotta, still gotta try out. Gotta, gotta try, try out. out yeah, They're lucky sure. you let let you on. I know, former running back. They let me on. Uh, you know, yeah. you know so, still mob, though. Well, still I, I guess you gotta stay tuned, right? Mm-hmm. Stay yeah, tuned. Stay Season tuned, two, sure. you can watch these guys on YouTube. We're, we're looking forward to it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. For sure. Thank you, Thank you for coming on. Thanks for having us. Thank you. It's real fun this fall. A beautiful night in Syracuse, New York. We are at halftime of the 2023 Syracuse football orange and blue spring game. Rini Angolia, Jay Alter with you. Rini, the NFL draft just six days away, April 27th on ESPN. Syracuse could have four guys picked, which would be the most ever under Dino Babers, and Mikel Jones leads the way. And I think Mikel Jones has a really good chance because of his athleticism. So a player like Jones linebacker but he's gonna play special teams too right to make a roster and very active if you look at the productivity in his career phenomenal you know i did his game in 2021 against pitt he had 16 tackles in that game he's all over the place but again i think his athleticism and the one thing i love about mikhail jones is didn't get invited to the combine didn't let it bother him gotten that good frame of mind 
worried about his pro day, did excellent at his pro day. So I think he's in a real good position, has an excellent chance of getting drafted. Yeah, you mentioned the versatility that a guy like that brings to the table. Another guy to keep your eye on, Matthew Bergeron, offensive lineman. And they re the pros, the scouts, they really like his size and his fit for the NFL. You see, projected yeah. the second round. You know, from Canada, nice pipeline from Canada to Syracuse with a lot of good players. And the thing that makes Bergeron good is his versatility. Now, he's a tackle, okay? He's athletic enough to play tackle, about 6'5", 315. But he can play guard as well, which is very important for these offensive linemen. The NFL like that when you can play guard or tackle. Tino Babers has been doing this a long time. He told us yesterday that Bergeron could be the highest ever selected player. That's a 35-year track. Yeah, he's definitely like a top five offensive tackle in this draft. Garrett Williams, also another stud on Syracuse's defense from a year ago. A total ball hawk in the secondary. The, the most important thing for Garrett Williams, he had the ACL injury. Right. Flying colors. All the teams looked at him. Doctors looked at him. He's got a clean bill of health. Uh, he's a kid with his athleticism, Jay, and his ball hawking skills, as you mentioned. Good opportunity going in the middle rounds. I really believe Garrett Williams will be drafted. And the fourth guy that you could hear from Syracuse is Sean Tucker, stud running back. He did not participate in the Orange Pro Day, but he's got a workout plan here in Syracuse on Monday. So keep an eye out for four names that could come off the board for Syracuse. That would be a record under Dino Babers in one draft class. And we'll be joined by Garrett Williams sometime in the second half as the Orange and Blue game continues from Syracuse. JMA Wireless Dome, the home to Syracuse football, the spring game. Getting a great preview of what's to come in the fall of 2023. We've talked a lot about Syracuse, Rini, but the ACC coming into this fall, Florida State seems like they've really found their footing. So many really strong quarterbacks, six returning quarterbacks, and all of them with NFL potential. Yeah, I mean, in, in today's game, you, you got to have it starts a quarterback, right? You have to have that that difference maker, that QB one, and so many teams in the ACC have really good quarterbacks. It's going to be a phenomenal season next year in the ACC. And Syracuse and Garrett Schrader, one of those yeah. teams returning a quarterback, and, and so much help with the continuity when you can keep your offensive system and keep your quarterback. You take a look at the scrimmage. So one half in the book, so forty minute have to go we're not keeping score just, this is just about getting reps it is again it's about player evaluation you know getting those reps in there put something good on tape uh, for the coaches to evaluate before uh, they come back to fall camp and before you see them on Sundays you could see them in a Syracuse spring game there's Kingsley Jonathan who played for the Orange a couple of years ago now playing for the Buffalo Bills great when those guys come back yeah. and a reminder that it all starts here we just talked about it at halftime but you could hear four orange names called six days from now when the nfl draft starts on espn april 27th luke mcphail back out there six foot four 205 redshirt sophomore out of boston massachusetts fourth string quarterback you know and you talked about the continuity early yes of, about offense I, I knew garrett schrader had played for a bunch of offensive coordinators but five he said you know that's tough for a quarterback five different offensive coordinators so the fact that jason beck is back still a quarterback coach offense coordinator is a big deal Intended pass for Kendall Long, broken up by Jeremiah Wilson. Now they gave the catch. Oh, it's caught. Yeah. He's going to look at it here. Kendall Long's going to go up. High point this ball. Good throw by McPhail. Great concentration by Kendall Long. I thought Wilson might have punched it out at the end there, but that's a really nice job by Long to finish that grab. And that's where, you know, Jeremiah Wilson, 24, you just got to turn around at the last second and play that ball. Does it? And then a nice reception. Red zone rep now for the Orange offense. The barreling forward. Mufu Parkman. True freshman out of Newark, New Jersey. Mufu, again, one of the four early enrollees for the Orange. 
He probably wants it again. He can oh. taste that end zone for the first time he in a Syracuse uniform. Definitely wants it again. You can tell by how hard he ran that time he carried the ball. So let's see if Coach Baber gives it to him again. And these are very meaningful reps for these young players. Their first ever reps for some of them with fans in the stands. The spring ball, the culmination of 15 practices. Parkman, great job. Gets into the end zone for the first of many touchdowns in a Syracuse uniform. And he should be getting ready for a senior prom right now and instead celebrating a spring game touchdown. Well, listen, they may not be officially keeping score, uh, but Parkman. But he is. He is, absolutely. He's going to call home all his friends and family say, I scored a touchdown in the spring game. A nice little subtle, great vision there. Bends it back, finds that little hole, bends it back to the inside. And he didn't want to go down. Yeah, lower those shoulders and get in the end zone. I mean, until his tight end, David Clement, hit him, <laughs> he didn't go down. Reminds me of a young Rini Angolia. Long time ago. You're good to at least put on social media, I'd say four or five times a year, your old <laughs> college highlights. Listen, I might be 51 years old. I could have got, I would have got it in the end zone there. <laughs> Give me the rock. Dino said he would give it to you he, on a fourth he, and one. That's right. He said he'd give it to me a couple times. I, and I thought to myself, well, that would be a turnover on downs. <laughs> <laughs> Miscommunication there. But, you know, with COVID, I might have another year of eligibility. That's true. So I could probably give him a call. <laughs> <laughs> I did always want to come to Syracuse. You did. And got you had a scholarship offer before the knee injury. Now, tuition's a little expensive here, so That's I, true. I wouldn't be coming back unless it was a scholarship. <laughs> you, you mentioned to me earlier. Great university, by the way. You were part of the practice squad with the Buffalo Bills, and they've expanded the practice squad. You said you'd still be playing on a practice squad if they had expanded practice squads back now. Maybe like not quite right now at 51, but, you know, uh, I'm brady light in my mind. <laughs> uh Kendall Long, another one of those receivers. Yeah. You talked about it earlier, Jake. Good size. The, the, the wide receiving group, 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", 6'5", 6'6". Good size. I really like this wide receiver group. And when you return a quarterback, again, he's only as good as his weapons. Well, Syracuse has a lot of them at his disposal. And again, I said this earlier, but because the attention that Aronde Gatson is going to get from defenses, you're going to see some guys, Damian Alford, Isaiah Jones, Kendall Long, we've been talking about, Trevor Pena. Some of these guys are going to be the beneficiaries of that next year and going to have some big games. And early in the season last year, a lot of emphasis on Sean Tucker yes. in the running game. As the season grew on, Jason Beck, the new offensive coordinator, who was the quarterback coach a year ago, said they really expanded the playbook and it really benefited Schrader because he's a dual threat yeah, quarterback. Yeah. So when you get the passing game going, it really opens up not just Schrader to run, but the running game. And I know well. as a former running back, it probably frustrated Sean Tucker because every running back wants the ball every time, right? And so, but I, I like what they did at the end of the season there, opened it up a little bit, and you're right, it benefited Schrader. Contested deep ball there in the end zone. Kendall Long wanted a pass interference call. Yeah, Cornell Perry there. Nice and physical. That's what you want from your DBs. Love that physicality there. Ripped the ball away at the end. Good coverage there by Perry. Now Dino Babers calling out the field goal unit again. We saw three attempts in the first half of the spring game from young Brady Danneberg. Big shoes to fill with Andre Schmidt. Lou Grozer award winner moving on to likely at least a, a camp tryout. Should get a NFL. shot, absolutely. 46-yard attempt for Denneberg. He was one of three in the first half. That one hit the upright, no good. All the coaches at Denneberg really impressed them. And they love him. Here's the thing. Denneberg's probably thinking, how about 36? How about 39? <laughs> They've been forcing him into 49 and 46 yard attempts here. This one from straight away and it missed again. I'll put a little pressure on the young man. 
But again, these are 15 practices they have all spring. This is the only one that's televised. Well, and if you're a Q's fan, too, you're saying to yourself, good, get the misses out of yes. the way now. Dude. Are you saying good? <laughs> Do it in spring game. Hammer that one. Plenty of leg, yeah. too. No question on the leg. That would have been good from 56, let alone 46. When we come back, we'll be joined by Syracuse Athletic Director John Wildhack, the Syracuse Spring Game 2023, getting a preview of what's to come this far. <laughs> Syracuse Spring Game rolls on. The offense in orange, the defense in blue, and a special guest, the athletic director, John Wildhack. You know, former colleague over at ESPN right. before becoming the Syracuse athletic director here. And John, we really appreciate you taking the time. I'm curious from your vantage point, what's the state of the Syracuse football team coming off a, a great season, start 6-0, and make a bowl game, headed into next fall? Optimism, I think Jay's the right word. Um, you know, we've got a lot of talent coming back, a lot of returning production, both sides of the ball. We were relatively young last year. Very. And, you know, we lost some good players. I'm not, I'm not downplaying that whatsoever, but there's a lot of talent coming back. A lot of young guys, particularly on defense, got reps last year. They're bigger, they're stronger this year, particularly on the defensive line. So I think optimistic is, optimism is the right word to describe the, the environment of the program. Yeah, they, they showed a stat earlier in the first half, or we did. 17 players made their first collegiate start last year, and a lot of them are coming back. So maybe at the time you're thinking, man, we're so banged up, the injuries are killing us, but all those reps are going to start to pay dividends. Right, and you know, they were starting to get some pretty good teams, too, when you look at our schedule. You know, we, we had Clemson, Notre Dame, you know, Pittsburgh, you know, back to back to back. We'd throw a little Florida State in there, that type of thing. So, um it was it was uh you know our young guys it was baptism by fire and john jay called you a former colleague you're a former boss okay you were a boss <laughs> at espn talk about the <laughs> facility upgrades and everything that's going into that because i know a lot of money's going in to the athletic department here well it's a hu huge part of it is uh, the, the lally athletics complex we del we debuted back in february a couple months ago our new entry and welcoming way and we will ask for approval in may to proceed with the new football complex yeah. and um, the football operations center. You can see some renderings there. It's it's phenomenal. It's 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 totally all new construction. Um, it's built with the student athlete, their experience in mind. So just upgrade in terms of sports medicine, uh, locker room, strength, conditioning, um, you name it. Players lounge, cafeteria, everything. So it's really designed and we've got input from our athletes as well to be really athlete friendly so that we give them everything they need to have the success that they want to have and we want them to have. So it's a huge, huge initiative. And Rene, I think when you combine that with what we've done at the Dome yeah. and then the Ensley Indoor Practice Facility, you know, we've got a package of facilities that can, can be very competitive. Yep. Which you have to be in this day and age. Correct. I mean, especially just even in the ACC conference with you know, everyone with the great facility. So this is going to be right in par with everyone in the country, really. Absolutely. And that's, you know, that's what we want. And again, it's it's athlete-centric, athlete-focused. And um, it's 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 the next really big step forward. Uh, we've also invested in the infrastructure, uh, the program in terms of, you know, kind of player personnel, recruiting, that type of thing. Real emphasis on what we're doing in terms of nutrition. We were doing a lot beforehand. We've emphasized even more recovery. Uh, all with, again, with, with, the, with the athlete in mind. Yeah. Um, because, you, as you know, mm -hmm. you know, you played, all right, you, know, you wake up Sunday, you're sore. What can we do from a recovery standpoint, yeah. right, to get you back? That's part of what we're investing in, in technology. That's part of what the new football operations center will be. And we show the renderings of what's to come, and there's not really a timetable, per se, on that yet. But it's just the next step of what has been a concerted effort with facilities here at the Dome, like you mentioned, over in the athletic complex. The other thing in terms of improvements, and I guess the changing landscape for the student athletes is now name, image, and likeness. What are the steps Syracuse has taken on that front? We've been, well, we have, an, uh, we have a collective athletes who care, um, and it's, they are working primarily with football and men's and women's lacrosse. Um, the co-founder, Cliff Ensley, uh, last three-sport letter winner at Syracuse, uh, Howie Fans, still life trustee. They've done a great job, and what it is, it really, it's all about community service and engagement for our players. 
So our players, they've gone down, they've worked at the Samaritan Center. Um, they've worked at the food shelter. They've worked at the Boys and Girls Club. So they give back to our community. So it makes our community better, gives an opportunity for our players to engage with our community. And at the same time, you know, it gives them, you know, some NIL, some NIL compensation. You mentioned men's and women's lacrosse, also part of that initiative. The women's lacrosse team, number one team in the nation right now. You won a national championship in men's soccer earlier this year. Could we see another national championship brought home to Syracuse? <laughs> well, I sure, I, I sure hope so. We got a long ways to go, but this team—they've been fun to watch. Yes. They played great. You know, last night, uh, BC, great fourth quarter. All credit to them. But you know, we've got as good a shot as anybody else. And, and Kayla trainer and her staff they've done a fantastic job we have great leadership great culture on the team i told a couple i told mega tyrell a couple weeks ago that the culture on their team reminds me of the culture of the men's soccer yeah. team it's all about the collective greatness not individual brilliance yep. but the collective greatness of a team and that's what championship yeah. teams are all about right yeah absolutely and i'm curious john your opinion acc this year football no just one division no separate right. divisions your thoughts on that I'm a proponent of that because yep. I think it's good that we play each other more frequently. I think I think that'll be good for the conference. I think it'll be good for our fans. I think it'll be good for our, for our media partner for ESPN. Um, so I'm I'm in fa I'm a big I'm a big favor, big fan of it. Tell oh, John Wildhack, great to hear the insight from the athletic director. We're going to step aside here after some more field goal attempts and. You know, the one last point I would make is when you took over as athletic director, it was to bring, you know, stability and trophies back to Syracuse. And you've done that. Obviously, the upgraded facilities have been excellent as well. But how great is it to kind of feel that winning spirit back in the building? Well, it's great. And it's a credit to the entire athletic department. Um, and I just yeah, I have the privilege of, of leading it. But one of the things we've tried to do is create a culture of, of where we all support one another. Yeah. And it was great last night. We had a bunch of football. Schrader was at the women's lacrosse mm -hmm. game, a bunch of football players, other sports as well. So when we support our peers, we've really emphasized that. And that, that has an impact on the team that's playing that night. The Brady Dannenberg getting some extended action tonight. His Extra seven practice field for Brady, seven. right? Yeah, exactly. You, you came over. He's got a huge leg. You've seen it in practice. Leg. And for a young kicker, it's just about getting that consistency. Exactly. From well, accuracy. and Bob Ligashevsky, our special teams yeah. coordinator, he's absolutely one of the best. He won a Super Bowl ring with the Steelers, and, and you get Bob continue to work with Brady through the spring, through the summer. He'll be a really good kicker by fall. Well, he drilled all three of those. So Brady Denenberg getting some great reps here at the Syracuse spring game. John Wildhack, we appreciate Thanks, the time. Great to see you. Appreciate. It. Welcome back to campus, Tom, thank Rainy. You. Welcome back to campus. Thank you. Thank you. Go Orange. Go Orange. Really looking forward to seeing how this team looks in the fall and appreciate the insight, John. Back here at the Syracuse spring football game. And unfortunately for Syracuse soccer coach Ian McIntyre, Syracuse football, but not Syracuse football. This this is uh, yeah, this this is uh, this is my football too though. It's, uh, now I used to play here way back in you used to play soccer games here. Uh, many many years ago. Did so, you really? When so was I, that? Uh, this was in the 90s. Yeah, I, uh, wow. uh, mid 90s. Uh, yeah, I've played a few games in here. So we brought football to the football stadium. I buried the lead though. Ian McIntyre, fresh off a national championship. We were just talking with your boss, John Wildhack, the athletic director, and he was so proud of the fact that this group came together, brought a national championship to Syracuse. You've been the head coach here for a long time. What did it mean to get to the mountaintop? It was just, it was very special to, uh, to, to, to bring a national championship home to Syracuse. And uh, this uh, community has, has been with us every step of the, uh, the journey. And, uh, and there it is. Uh, that ball hit the back of the net. Uh, Anthony Sinclair, our captain. And uh, you can see what it meant to the guys. And, you know, we saw the, uh, the videos here in the, in the dome as well. It meant a lot to our community. Now, I read some quotes and you'll have to verify he would not have been your first choice of taking a penalty but he buried it he wouldn't have been my 35th choice. <laughs> it's uh but look it was written our, our, our captain our spiritual leader um making that play and look he's going to go down as the guy who uh made the penalty that uh, secured a national championship coach not i got a couple daughters that play soccer so i'm kind of a soccer dad i got a daughter that plays college soccer down in south florida so I know the sport a little bit. Congratulations on the national championship. I'm curious, though, 
and maybe I'm wrong, so if I'm off base, tell me. When you think national championships and you think soccer powers, you don't really think Syracuse. So how have you done with recruiting? Because you've brought some phenomenal players here and obviously won a national championship. Uh, yes, look, it, uh, winning doesn't hurt. Yeah. So uh, it's it's good to, to have that. And uh, uh, look, there was a lot of eyes on that national championship run and, and uh, a year where we won the ACC championship as well. So it, it, it certainly uh, it helps and uh, the success that some of our players have had moving on into the pro uh, world as well um, so look, we're still looking for uh, for players who take tremendous pride in representing Syracuse University in this part of uh, central New York and uh, when we find the right caliber of player and uh, you know if we get everyone buying in and moving in the right direction you can accomplish something truly special it's a great soccer conference too, the ACC oh, right well. I mean the, the competition's phenomenal Oh, it's it's brutal. It's uh, yeah. in an awesome way yeah. uh, for all of our sports here. It's it's a, a real privilege to be competing in the uh, ACC. Uh, you're playing, you know, as if you're a student athlete, you get to play against the best players in the country week in week yeah. out. And as coaches, we get to compete against the best. No doubt. Joined right now by Syracuse soccer head coach Ian McIntyre, fresh off a national championship this fall. I heard you're getting your rings this weekend. So the ring ceremony is this weekend. Was there any thought? being British to go winner's medal instead of rings. I'll be honest with you, the ring concept is a very American um, concept. So um, the ring, look, I know how big it is and, and for our guys, it's awesome. It's a real, it's gonna be a special night. And to be able to share that with our local community, our alumni, we've got a ton of alums in town this weekend, uh, family members. It's going to be a really special night. Do the production crew, anybody from the production crew get rings by chance? Or? I think no. everyone, right? It's, Give them uh, the, <laughs> anyone that was a part of it, right? It. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. I don't expect you to remember, but you were the only college coach that would come on my college radio show with John Paul Chunga back, uh, what rhymes with orange, back in the college days. We had so much fun with you. So this is a real full circle moment for me to have you up at the booth. Oh, it's, it's a real privilege to be here. And you've done okay for yourself. <laughs> he was a prima donna back then, but he's, he's humbled a little yeah, bit you, now. I, I didn't want to say that yeah. on camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Coach Mack, great to see you. Thank hey, congratulations you on much. all the success. Thanks for having me. Congrats, Coach. Thank you. Well, great conversation about Syracuse. Soccer will be back to wrap up the Syracuse Spring game when we come back. <laughs> it's almost like a game of musical chairs up here in the broadcast booth. We've had athletic director John Wildhack, Syracuse soccer coach Ian McIntyre, fresh off the national championship, and now Garrett Williams. All Orange fans remembers this guy wreaking havoc in the secondary and now getting ready for the NFL draft just six days away. I'm curious, since you took that last snap, playing for Syracuse to now what's the draft process been like for you yeah it's been a, a lot of talking you know a lot of meetings um a lot of talking about you got to talk about yourself some you know talking about things you do things you do well um you got to be able to talk about your defense your teammates uh, things like that so you got to be able to speak highly of yourself and others and also be honest about the things that you might need to improve on because mm -hmm. teams want to see if you're honest about that as well because there's no such thing as a perfect player uh, so it's been really cool kind of learning about yourself and then learning about how the NFL kind of works as well in the process. And the knee's great. You feel good, right? And like flying yeah. colors, right? No problems <laughs> at all with the knee, right? Yeah, I'm progressing really well. Awesome. Um, all the teams, I think that's helped me a lot. All the teams are really encouraged about all my medical rechecks and things like that. Uh, so, you know, from I just can't wait to get back to playing ball doing my thing. Now, did you lose a bet or something? You're wearing a Marlo Wax T-shirt? Right? <laughs> no, nah, I just want to... That's what it looks like. My guy. Yeah, there you go. You're there. supporting him. That's what my guy, man. Marlo Wax. <laughs> well, you were a part of a defense that was top 25 back-to-back -back years. You know, obviously, you're moving on to the next level in the NFL, but a lot of these guys are returning. How impressed are you with this Syracuse defense, and what should we be, I guess, positive about going into next fall? Yeah, so I've when I'm not traveling, I've been at all the practices, so I've been able to see them day in, day out. They're good days. They're bad days. And I think the biggest thing I can speak of is the leadership stay consistent. Uh, even though Marlo Waxton, do spring, Hay was a very big leader. Him, Caleb Ogachuku, Justin Barron, those three being like, you know, the main returners coming back have done a really good job of keeping the group together, keeping the mob mentality that we preached last year uh, to be the main thing still. And I think you're starting to see it now with the aggression, the excitement that the guys are playing with. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it a lot. And I think there's a lot of good things to look forward to. And a lot of newcomers as well who are coming in their own right now. Now, Garrett, how are the nerves? The draft's less than a week away. Right. Now, you know, I did my homework and people are saying maybe middle rounds. What are you hearing from the NFL teams and, and just how do you feel? 
Yeah, so for me, they're projecting third and early fourth round, and I, I feel good. You know, I feel like anything that takes me will be smart, and anything that doesn't take me will be stupid. You know? so, uh, I like that. Attitude, good, good answer. You know? So I feel pretty good, pretty comfortable, because I've done everything I can control. Yeah. You know, you can't control who takes you and how the things go, but I just know when I get my chance, I'm going to make the most of it. Good for you. How did so, playing here at Syracuse prepare you for the next level? Yeah, so it was being around a lot of like-minded guys. So I was lucky to come in and be around guys like Andre Sisco, Trill Williams, Ify Mala Fonwood, and the Deuce Chestnuts, the Jahads, and then the Justin Barrett. You know, it's a lot of guys uh, to be able to keep you in the same mindset, stay focused, and want to reach the right goals and not get distracted. And I think the biggest thing they taught me here was, like, if you want to reach your goals, you got to put in the extra work. You know, you got to do more than the average person. Um, and you got to do more than what even yourself might want to do, you know. Uh, you want to reach the stars and try to get what you want. And, you know, not only are you most likely going to get drafted, you got a chance to have a couple other guys drafted as well. Yeah. It could be a big draft class for Syracuse. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's I think that's the coolest part of this whole thing. Yeah. Uh, being able to share the experience with um, a lot of other guys who I came up with playing together since we were freshmen. So, you know, the jump we made from our freshman year to now um, it's a lot. So it's it's been a lot of fun, and it's I just can't wait to see it all come together for all of us. No doubt. Well, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter when. of when. Garrett Williams hears his name called, headed from Syracuse to the NFL Draft. As Randy mentioned, one of four names that will likely be called in the NFL Draft. Garrett, we appreciate Thank the you. insight. Thanks Thank for joining you. us. Can't man. wait to watch Thank on you. Sundays, yes, Garrett. Thank you. And you heard of this Syracuse <laughs> defense is for real. They're not going anywhere. <laughs> no, sir. They're going to be ready. Well, what a great night this has been, not just getting a great inside look of what's to come in fall 2023 for the Syracuse football team, but hearing from so many different guests that we've rolled through, really, really enjoyed it, Rainey. Yeah, it's been great, and that's really what this spring game's about. Young guys, player evaluation, and then getting to do interviews, talking to people. The interview with, with John Wildhack was, was great. Yeah, great insight. Ian McIntyre, awesome, you know? So, yeah, good stuff tonight. When you talk Syracuse 2023, I think the headline will be this defense. Top 25 each of the last two seasons. If this team's going to surprise people at the ACC, it'll be defensively and, led, I And think. again, we talked about it earlier, imperative that they get off to a good start. Yes. We didn't get to see Garrett Schrader tonight, but he will be QB1 come the fall. Justin Lamson, Carlos Del Rio, Wilson have been battling to see who will back up Schrader. You, you've liked Lamson tonight. I have. Now, and you brought this up earlier. He he's, was in there with the ones. He's not now, but he, he, he was in that first drive, and he looked good. He made some nice reads, some good throws. There's Schrader, a dual-threat quarterback. And, you know, Dino, Dino Babers, when he took the job, it was all about being the fastest team in the country. He's toned a little bit of that down, and I think with Schrader, maybe you ramp that back up again. A quarterback that's now been in your system for two seasons and certainly capable of running the football as well. Great grab here. Well, he, again, the receivers do a nice job. Hatcher comes back to the football. That's what you want to do. Takes the hit, holds on. And so, yeah, you know, and one, one of the takeaways from this spring game is I think the depth that they're going to have at the wide receiver position, I think it's deep. I agree deep. with you. I think you got some big, talented receivers. So, yeah, look out for that group next year. Quint Allen back in there. He will be the starting running back this fall for the Orange. Everyone's focused on the schedule, though. You've said a strong start is necessary. You say it has to be 3-0. Yeah, well, you got to win those two for sure. I mean, Purdue's going to be a tough game going on the road. Um, so, yes, if you can get to 3-0, then I think you can beat Army at 4-0 going into Clemson. I mean, that's ideal if you're a Syracuse fan. 4-0 going against Clemson at worst, 3-1. And, and that's a team that traditionally under Dino Babers, they've played really well. Against Clemson, absolutely. They have. Yes. Last year could have beaten them on the road, had them on the ropes late in the second half. Del Rio Wilson back in now. It's true, Dino Babers, this wasn't just coach speak. These two guys really have gone 50-50 this spring. Yeah, and, and listen, they've both done really nice things. And so once they pick it back up in fall camp, they're, they're in a good position. I 
think what's so tough for Syracuse is the same thing that every AC school has to deal with. And it's just a really, really talented league, quarterback heavy. Would you say it's the best conference for quarterbacks yeah, I going think, into next year? Yeah, I think top to bottom. Because, you know, we've had some transfers within the conference, you know? So, yeah, really talented. I mean, you know, and, and Hartman leaves Wake Forest, goes to Notre Dame. I, I consider Notre Dame a quasi ACC team, you know, because of the amount right. of ACC teams they play. So yeah, quarterback play is really good, and uh, and the fact that there's just one division now, right? No, there's no, there's not two divisions. Just the bat, at the end of the day, the top two teams are gonna go at it in the ACC championship game. And how will the offensive line hold up over the course of a grueling ACC season? Obviously, the injury bug yeah. ended up being a big storyline for Syracuse last year. They lost seven of their top 22. And, that, and the offensive line question, question mark, if you will, that, that's the big one, right? Because there's not a lot of depth there. Yeah. I think Syracuse is happy with those front five if everybody stays healthy, but the depth will be a question mark. So Escobar with that catch. He's caught a, a few nice balls out of the backfield tonight. Good run after the catch. It could be a nice third down receiving back. And the orange offense punches it into the end zone again. Hatcher. That's his second touchdown grab of the night. Yeah, and I was very impressed with Amari Hatcher tonight as well. And so that'd be a great one to end this stretch on if you're Dino Babers. Nice touchdown reception by Hatcher. Now you called it, Randy. Yeah. Dino just blew the whistle. That does it for the 2023 Syracuse spring game. And even though the defense dominated early, the, the Team Orange, the offense, did really well in the second half. And again, I think I was most impressed with the, the play of the wide receivers tonight. Uh, something to really build on. Well, spring football is all about getting a sneak preview of what's to come this fall. Dino Babers' team, they are ready to roll. They shocked everybody a year ago starting out 6-0. and They'd love to do it again, putting the ACC on notice. Garrett Schrader will be ready this fall. A loaded defense. We appreciate everybody who joined us taking in the 2023 Syracuse Spring football game for Rini Agolia. I'm Jay Alter saying so long.